Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. So in this video, I'm gonna cover intercropping and really introduce you to it. And I think intercropping is a great subject to discuss at this time of year because our gardens are really beginning to fill up with plants and seedlings. And this can bring a problem, which is where do I fit other things? And so in this video, I'm gonna show you all about intercropping, the benefits, the drawbacks, as well as at the end, showing you the best practices. So if you want to get started, you know exactly how to do it. So what is intercropping? Well, it's the opposite of monocropping. And an example of monocropping is, I've got a block here just of broad beans. But intercropping is where you grow two or even more crops in the same space. And the sole purpose of it is to increase yields per square foot. And if you have a small garden, this is especially exciting. And I'm gonna show you two examples of intercropping now. One where it's purposeful and one where it was a bit of a surprise. There are quite a few different styles of intercropping which I'm going to cover in this video but I want to start here with the planned normal most common style of intercropping which is just two crops grown in between one another. So I've got radish and this is the onion bed, two different varieties. The radish are multi-sown and I'll come on to that next but first this lettuce here was quite a surprise actually because last year I let, I actually grew lettuce in this space. I let it seed and a lot of the seeds as you can see fell into the ground and they came back almost by surprise this spring so i thought let them grow see how they do so that was completely un unplanned kind of surprised intercropping with the lettuce but that was planned with the radish here's the radish and the onions these onions are sturon and they were transplanted around a week or two after the ones just a bit further to my left and I've got the radish uh, planted and grown in between. And this is just a, a prime example of very basic intercropping. I'm just making use of the space in between the onions and the radish I can just pick when needed like this. They got hit quite badly with flea beetle when I first transplanted them, but they've managed to pull through and you can see that we are getting harvest from them. And an important lesson here when it comes to intercropping is that if you want to grow two crops in the same area, you've got to take note of the size of plants. There's no point growing two things that are really going to grow to the same height because they'll kind of smother one another out. So here we've got the emergent layer. We've got the onions that are just coming through and then almost as ground cover, we've got the radish. So it's really making use of two different levels of light. And that is just a really simple thing about intercropping. It's just if there's a bit of space in the ground that's not going to be utilised and you can fit something in it, put it in. Here's the top part of the bed. It's a different variety of onion. It's Senshi, I believe, and a different supplier, not organic. And uh, unfortunately, I'm kicking myself that I just didn't grow the whole bed as the same crop because these aren't performing as well and I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that lettuce was here last year because the whole bed was different salads but you get an idea as well of, of interplanting and making space with what's come up from self-sown seeds and this lettuce is now getting to harvest stage so even though some of it's beginning to encroach on the onions here if I just start harvesting it back it's going to give the onions just a little bit more space but i'm not i'm not too worried i'm just letting things grow and seeing how it goes and i think a beautiful part about gardening is you sometimes sit back and see what happens and this is giving me ideas that perhaps next year because i like to start onions pretty early i might actually purposefully sow or transplant um, interplant modules of lettuce in between onions and not just radish so there's a few different things happening and it means i can get even more from the same space and there's another thing that's also coming up self seeding i've got nasturtiums and i've got smaller ones here that came out first and got hit by the frost but these nasturtiums as well i'm just going to let them grow and hopefully they'll overflow later on in summer and that means i've got three crops interplanted with one another and i didn't have to plant two of them 
there's a different style of intercropping and that is simply growing different varieties of the same crop together. So I've sown charred bright lights here, Swiss chard, absolutely love it. But you can see that there are a few different varieties within. And if you're just starting out, this is a great way to introduce yourself to intercropping. And you can do things like different beetroot varieties. One of the favorite things that I love to grow is golden beetroot. And you can intercrop that with normal beetroot, such as Boltardi. And it's just a bit of fun. And as well, visually, it can split up the lines and just make it look a bit more natural. Something that I love so much about intercropping is having a bit of creativity especially when it comes to vertical growing. So I've got a wigwam here. I've got eight scarlet runner beans. And something that I'm going to be doing in about a week is transplanting these climbing beans, Blauhalder, I think that's how you pronounce it, a beautiful purple potted climbing bean that I think has pink and purple flowers. So I'm going to grow four of these and four scarlet runner beans up a wigwam spaced uh, one each around and I think when it comes to flowering it's going to be amazing you're not only going to get the red flowers of the runner beans but you're also going to get the beautiful pink and purple flowers of this and you can really get creative you can interplant peas like aldermans and runner beans if you want or you could even get really creative and interplant edibles with ornamentals for example climbing beans and sweet peas. One of my favourite styles of intercropping is called strip intercropping and I love it because it really makes the most of the space and it can give you the opportunity to get a cash crop before your main crop matures. So I've got six rows of beetroot in this bed and I do want a bit of space between them just because it reduces vermin issue which we've had in the past actually because there'll be a bit less cover and it just gives them the, some more space to develop but these aren't going to develop for another two or three months until I'll start harvesting them so I have plenty of time to put a quick crop of radish and I can actually succession radish as well along this so I could do one row every week but I'll be going into succession sowing in a bit more detail in a different video but I just think that if you are growing in strips and this is especially if you have a larger garden then try and make most of early maturing varieties to get an extra crop otherwise this could be a bit of wasted potential. An advantage of intercropping that I can't forget to mention is when it comes to pests. I'm growing carrots here and I'm just using the traditional method of, of growing in strips here and I've got around five rows to begin with and then there'll be another three in uh, sown in maybe a couple of weeks and I've got this mesh to protect them from carrot root fly but there's a different way of growing carrots where you don't need to invest in a mesh like this and you can still get some pretty good success and that's by intercropping carrots with other vegetables and what this does is that it confuses pests and this is also known as polyculture planting which is going to also be a future video but if you interplant different things together such as different plant groups it means it's a lot harder for pests to really grab hold and destroy your crop so you can use interplanting as a way of reducing potential pest damage Another advantage of intercropping is that it helps keep down on weeds once it begins to get established. So we're back at the onions and the radish here and there are little weeds beginning to grow through and only very slightly. But I'm not worried about fussing around and trying to pick up all the little tiny weeds because the radish is doing an excellent job of creating a very shady area. So the weeds are going to struggle to really grab hold. And by the time I've harvested all the radishes, I'll probably pick out the remaining weeds. So that does save you a bit of time rather than trying to weed in between just the onions. And one final advantage before we go into the disadvantages and slight drawbacks of intercropping is having all of this ground cover as well helps reduce 
evaporation and this is great so if you have a hot day like it is today having all this greenery and leaf keeping the ground cool is going to reduce moisture evaporating we've looked at some of the benefits of intercropping but i just want to mention some of the disadvantages the first one is shade so if you think about it i've got space in between these two potato rows which are just recovering after being frosted which is great to see there's space to grow something along here, you know, there'd be plenty of space for dwarf beans, but the issue is, once the potato plants really start growing again, they're going to smother and suffocate anything that I've planted in this row. So you've really got to think about light levels uh, so it works. Another thing is complexity. You've got to get the timings right and you've got to get the planning right so sometimes you'll just feel that if it's too hard to try and intercrop something don't worry about it and just leave it out because I don't see any point in spending loads of time trying to fit something in just for the sake of it because sometimes it's easier just to let it go but try intercropping something simpler. Here's another quick example when it comes to shade. We've got the broad beans here and it's quite dark underneath and there's not really enough space to grow anything that will be worth harvesting or enough light. So as a compromise, I am growing things just on the very outside and the fringes and really trying to fit something in. I saw there was some space, so I just stick some of these spare lettuce seedlings. Now you could try and intercrop in between broad beans in the future by spacing the broad beans out, but I think that's actually going to create more effort for you because you're going to have to end up staking broad beans because by growing them close together, they all support one another. Rather than growing them quite far apart, you're going to then have to support them and that's going to be a pain. So sometimes it just doesn't make sense to intercrop. Here's a different style of intercropping, which I just want to show you before I outline the main tips that you need to bear in mind if you want to get started using this method. And this is our flower bed, and I'm trying to grow more flowers this year, especially ones that are good for pollinators and also cut flowers. So I've got Cosmos, about three different varieties. I've got a dwarf mix here, um, which will grow to around a foot and a half, 45 centimetres. I've then got Double Click and I think Candy Stripe, which are taller Cosmos. I've got some corn flower as well, just stuck them in over on this end, and some self sown nasturtiums. So I've got different layers here. I've got nasturtiums, which will be the ground layer, which will also droop over the side. I've then got the dwarf cosmos and then the tall variety. So within this same space, I'm growing multiple different types and different heights of flowers. And I'm just really excited to see this later on in summer. Here are the tips to guarantee intercropping success. And the first one is to take into account the height between two types of crops that you want to grow. So here I've got the run of beans again, and I've also got some parsley that I'd like to grow. But these grow at very different heights. The parsley is much more of a ground level crop, and the run of beans much more of a vertical. So that means they're not competing with one another and they can get two crops in the same space. As well as considering the height of the plants when you're intercropping, the other thing you should consider is the depth of the roots. So I've got dwarf beans here and I can't wait to transplant them, but these are fairly shallow rooted. So it makes sense to perhaps intercrop them with something like carrots, which are much deeper roots. Or other things like salads and spinach intercropped around potatoes, just so the root spaces don't compete with one another. When intercropping, try and combine two different vegetable varieties. So I've got here the onions, which are alliums, and then the lettuce, which are the salads or the leafy greens. And that's just gonna really help reduce potential pest infestations and also potential disease issues as well. Another tip to do with intercropping that you perhaps might just want to bear in mind because it isn't as important, but try and group crops together that require similar water. And this is very simple if you're growing different varieties of the same crop, for example, chard here. 
the final tip that I have for you to do with intercropping is perhaps the most important and that's just to have a bit of fun trialing and experimenting growing different things in the same space and look at different spacings between plants different varieties different families and just see what happens because you might be pleasantly surprised and come across a pairing that no one else really uses and turns out to be very productive for you. Hopefully you have enjoyed this introduction to intercropping, which I think has such amazing benefits and potential when it comes to your garden and trying to maximize the food that you want to get from its space. And I'm really enjoying testing out all sorts of different types of weird and wonderful ways of intercropping. So if you have any further questions about it, please do let me know. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye.